Hello everyone, my name is Tadashi Deshima from the R2RI Railway Technical Research Institute in Japan. My main research area is railway track components, especially I am focusing on railway rails and rail fastening systems. I'm very glad to have a chance to introduce my work at this symposium. Uh, today I'd like to talk about the test and verification method of rail fastening systems applied in Japan. Well, let me start my presentation with the introduction of the background of this study. As you know, rail fastening systems are an important track component which has functions such as fastening rails to rail support, keeping track gauge constant, damping impact load, and reducing vibration. Some of these functions are directly related to track safety. Therefore, the verification of the rail fastening system is necessary and very important. As for the test method for verification, several tests compared with the ARIMA standard and the European standard are ex existing. In Japan, and the research institute established the test method in Japan National Railway, which is the uh, present RTRI. Maybe, as you know, one of the hot topics related to the verification test method in recent years is the international uh, standardization activity. The development of international standard uh, for fastening systems started in 2014, and the working group was established. In the working group, uh, several test method standards for rail fastening systems are discussed and uh, developed based on the EN as a draft. Here, the EN for rail fastening systems, such as uh, EN 13146 series, does not consider other countries' uh, situation such as uh, effect of track gauge, alignment, and so on. Therefore, according to the philosophy of the international standard, the test method shall be applicable in the several countries and regions all over the world, taking into consideration various conditions. With the background at the beginning of the presentation, I'd like to start to give you some information about the test method for rail fastening systems in Japan for your better understanding. Next, I introduce the verification process of rail fastening systems adopted in Japan. After that, I'd like to talk about our recent study, that is, the effect of unsupported cross tie to the vertical distributed force acting on a single fastening assembly. Finally, I will summarize this presentation. Okay, so I introduced the information regarding the verification test method for rail fastening systems conducted in Japan. To confirm the required performance of the rail fastening system, which has developed new or improved based on the past type, the testing for fastening systems has been carried out in Japan. We have mainly six types of tests. First of all, I explained other assemblages. This test confirms the possibility of fastening assembly as per design. Note, this test doesn't require any test machine. The stiffness test is for obtaining several stiffnesses surrounding the fastening system using a static loading test machine. These measured stiffness are used in the calculation process of the loading condition applied to the static loading test, as I discussed later. The rail restraint test is for figuring out the rail restraint force to the rail clamping force using a single assembly. In particular, the rail restraint force is a very significant factor in the design of bus rest track in Japan because the rail restraint force is severe in consideration of the effect on the railway structure. Then we conduct the static learning test to obtain the responses such as rail displacement and stress on the creep for rail fastening systems. To conduct this test, we use the biaxial loading test machine for alternative static loading test to a single fastening assembly, as shown in this figure. Here, let me explain the reason why the biaxial loading test is carried out in Japan. On the sharply curved track in the narrow gauge, the first wheel axis acts towards the outside of the track, and the second wheel axis 
up towards the inside of the track through several measurements in the real track. The figure shows an example of the lateral force measured at the sharply curved section with a curved radius of 160 meters. In this figure, the vertical axis indicates the lateral force. So the positive number means the lateral force acting towards the outside of the track. We can see the trend of the lateral forces, which alternately acts in the opposite direction. This is why we conduct the alternating biaxial loading test in Japan. We conduct the repeated loading test to verify the fatigue durability of the fastening assembly, applying the same loading condition to the static loading test using the same test machine. We carry out the visual inspection after the one million cyclic alternative loading test. Finally, we carried out the electronic resistance test for obtaining the required electronic resistance for the fastening systems. In this testing, we set three test conditions, a dry, wet, and a dirty condition. The design standard of railway structure, tracks structure, was published in 2009 from the MLIT, uh, Ministry of the Land, Infrastructure, and Tourism, and RTRI. In the standard, the verification process for track components has been regulated. In addition, the verification procedure has also regulated in comparison to the responses to the design load and the predefined limit value for each component. The flowchart shows the process of the verification of uh, safety for track components. First, a design load is set and the design forces such as design hoil load and the design lateral force are derived as a multiplication of the design load and uh, the variation coefficients. The uh, track alignment determines the applying coefficients in the case of the conventional line. After that, we carried out the testing applying the design force and we compared the responses such as the rail displacement and the uh, rail creep stress to the limit value. When the responses are lower than the limit values, the verification is accepted. The design standard rail structure, track structure, was published in 2009 from the MLIT, Ministry of Land, Infrastructure and Tourism, and RTRI. In the standard, the verification process for track components has been regulated. In addition, the verification procedure has also regulated in comparison to the responses to the design load and uh, predefined limit value for each component. The flowchart shows the process of the verification of the safety for track components. First, a design load is set and design forces as, such as uh, design hoil load and the design lateral force are derived as a multiplication of the design load and the variation coefficients. The track alignment determines the applying coefficients in the case of the conventional line. After that, we carried out the testing applying the uh, design force and we compared the responses such as a rail displacement and the rail creep stress to the limit value. When the responses are lower than the limit values, the verification is accepted. To verify safety for the rail fastening systems, mainly two items are verified. One is the rail displacement during the static loading test. For example, the limit value of the rail displacement is 5.2 mm for high-speed rail and 7.0 mm for the conventional rides. The other is the rail creep stress during the static loading testing. When the combination of the mean and variation stress obtained during the test is plotted inside the acceptor's area in the Goodman diagram corresponding to the used spring steel, as shown in the right figure, this verification is accepted. So let's move to today's main topic which I would like to introduce a recent study on the design force acting on the fastening systems. Archer has 
been focusing on revising coefficients for calculating design forces such as the design hoi road and design lateral force. Because the coefficients has been defined based on the measurement result obtained on the track, additionally, the coefficients are said to be on the safe side in calculating design forces. The table shows the coefficients to calculate design forces for the conventional line. Here, A load means the maximum load that occurs per year, and B load means the maximum load often occurs. As we can see, the coefficients for calculating the design lateral forces vary with uh, the curve radius where the passing system is applied. Therefore, we are tackling the study uh, regarding the revision of the coefficients considering the limit stage design. In this presentation, I'd like to focus on a study on virtual design force. Using the elastic beam theory and the rail cheating analysis model uh, proposed in the 1960s in Japan, the vertical and the lateral distributed force acting each rail passing system have been calculated. Regarding the uh, conventional method, the stiffness surrounding the rail passing system has been set only as linear or bilinear uh, property. Uh, therefore, the uh, distributed force derived by the conventional method has been not accurate. For this issue, uh, we propose a new calculation method. This method uses the FEM half side track model to calculate the distribution of the design force acting to each fastening system by setting stiffness as nonlinear. Because of this uh, proposed method, it has become possible to calculate distributed forces more accurately. To validate this FM model, we conducted the loading test using a test track assembled. Then we compared the result of the loading test with the result of the analysis. The figure on the right shows the example of the comparison of the result. Comparing the vertical cross tie displacement, it is concluded that the both results are approximately matched. From the uh, comparison, we confirmed the validity of the uh, FEM model. In this FEM half size track analysis model, we have four kinds of stiffness surrounding rail fastening systems shown in the figure on the left. Here, each stiffness is assumed to be equal in all cross sides or fastening systems. This study expanded the FM model to adjust lower rail support stiffness, considering gap between cross ties and track bed, as shown in the figure on the right. By this expansion, it became a big possible to clarify the effect of unsupported cross tie on the vertical distributed force. Using the expanded FM model, we studied the vertical distributed force considering the effect of the unsupported cross tie. We set gap measured on the track to the expanded analysis model, and we conducted loading analysis for each point directly above the cross ties to obtain the vertical distributed force under the loading point. This figure shows the measured gap and the calculated vertical distributed force under the loading point. You can see that five or six cross ties are unsupported partially on the track. Besides, we found the trend that the vertical distributed force became larger at the cross ties supported properly, and a few neighbor cross ties were unsupported. After the FEM analysis, where we conducted the statistical analysis of the vertical distributed force occurring in each cross tie. We calculated the ratio of the force obtained by the FM analysis to the force when cross tie evenly supported. The figure shows the distribution of the ratio. From this figure, you can see that the significant value is larger than the sum of the mean value and the three times of the standard deviation. 
of the uh, ratio. On the other hand, the second largest value is 1.13. But the previous study in Japan shows that the variable component of the dynamic coil load is within 10% of the static coil load. In the case accepting the significant value and adopting the second largest value, the ratio concerning the whole load fluctuation is derived as a multiplication of the second largest ratio, 1.13, and the conversion value of the 10% to decimals, 0.1. Therefore, it became uh, clear that the ratio concerning the whole load fluctuation is almost the same as the current coefficients for calculating a vertical design force. Then let me summarize my presentation. Six types of the test methods for rail fastening systems is conducted in Japan, and the verification method of the fastening system is specified in the design standard. In the verification of safety for rail fastening systems, the rail displacement and the stress on the rail clip are verified. As a recent study, I introduced the uh, study of uh, the derivation method or uh, design forces for accuracy improvement. As a result, we confirmed that uh, current value to be valid regarding coefficients applied to calculation of the uh, vertical component of design force, design whole world. And as future work, uh, we are tackling to study the coefficients applied to uh, calculation of the lateral components of the design force. The references is uh, as shown here. Thank you for your kind attention.